Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today we're gonna take a look at the business of mail order cannabis. Drop shipping eventually is gonna be huge. In the meantime, we're gonna take a look at just mail order from Canada and California. Ease is one of Snoop Dogg's uh, investments. Uh, Ease is a delivery service out of California. Not doing so hot. Uh, they had $166 million in total investment and they're probably gonna go out of business. Um, but we're going to take a look at what's happening, at least in Canada, as well as California, with uh, the business of mail order cannabis. So one year after adult use cannabis, Canada's online cannabis stores continue treading water amid tough regulations and illicit competition. So consumers in the U.S. can only dream of having legal cannabis arrive by mail. Those in Canada have enjoyed that luxury for more than a year now and even longer for many medical patients. And yet mail order sales only account for for less than 6% of the recreational market as of September 2019. That's a steep decline from the 43% in sales from the year before. Statistics Canada attributes the decrease in mail order sales to the increase in brick and mortar cannabis stores, but mail order marijuana providers also face ample competition from the black market and are prohibited from advertising. So every gram of cannabis that's sold legally in British Columbia goes through the British Columbia Liquor Distribution Branch. So the first year in legalization, they completed 148,000 online transactions, contributing 1.1 billion to funding government services, about 2 million short of its projections. So Vancouver is both the sole direct-to-consumer seller of cannabis and the only wholesaler of cannabis for licensed retail stores in the entire province. It's why the mail order thing was such a big deal, because it's going to take some time to get into stores into smaller communities. So right now, no matter where you live in BC, you could buy cannabis online and get it, and it's the same shipping fee. So those ship as far as almost 1,500 miles. And now with the advent of Cannabis 2.0, physical and online cannabis stores can both legally sell vape and edible products, but the adversity facing Canada's online business goes beyond product offerings and business owners may have their hands tied for some time to come. There's still a staggering limited number of legal online cannabis retailers. Ontario is the most populated province in Canada with 14 million people. It's about 40% of the total population. They just have one licensed online store for recreational cannabis. The second, third, and fourth most populous provinces, Quebec, British Columbia, and Alberta, also have one licensed online retailer apiece. Now, although there's federal legalization in Canada, there's still a lot of differences. So they have a 10 milligram maximum limit. They do have access to banking and the federal mailing systems, but there's strict restrictions on advertising, packaging, zoning, mandated security requirements, the same kind of traceability. Um, but really the limitations on, on milligrams is going to be huge because I'm not even going to bother with 10 milligrams. That's crazy. So what do you guys think? Will the U.S. ever allow mail order sales like Canada? We're also going to take a look at a cannabis delivery company adapting its strategy to focus on increasing participation by women. A study by E said that uh, the participation and, and purchases were up over 80% year over year. So the San Francisco-based Ease is an online cannabis marketplace and home delivery service. Uh, they're seeing that the demographics are growing proportion for first-time delivery use, including uh, representing women, increasing you know 81 percent year over year. In 2018, women represented a total of 38 percent for first-time deliveries, but that figure increased to 43 percent in 2019. So Ease is trying to attract women by making sure that there are products that they would enjoy on the platform and making sure that they have educational content that's relevant to women. This includes uh, holding educational events at locations such as nail salons and fitness centers. And additionally, the company is incorporating products that appeal to new users such as microdosing and CBD heavy products. Baby Boomers is one of the fastest growing demographics on Ease's delivery platforms out of California. And Generation Z is the next closest at 40% of women, followed by Millennials and then Gen X. So Ease has modified its marketing tactics to product offerings and emphasize a preference between genders that aren't that different. So women are slightly more likely to buy edibles and pre-rolls, topicals and drops, and men are more likely to purchase flour and concentrates. And this report kind of just normalizes everything. Women tend to be the, the family or, or home um, buying decision maker. So naturally, you should just kind of focus on, on women as they want some CBD and uh, spa-like treatments. So all of those things, whether it's uh, edibles or 
uh, bath bombs are going to be huge players. I think that the, what we've seen in the rec market, right, if each regulated marketplace has topicals and tinctures, they sell the least amount. And yet therapeutically, they have some of the best advantages. So I think that eventually, maybe after a year or so from now, so 2022, 2021, that those will be huge increases and upticks in people using topicals and tinctures a lot more than um, obviously now. CBD is going to take away market share from ibuprofen, menthols, creams and rubs, and it's going to be more of a holistic approach uh, down the road. So I think that's going to be a huge market drive, a lot more products being sold from the topicals and tinctures as it gets into grocery stores. Most people don't want to go into a rec shop. And so once CBD and THC become more readily available outside of that little bubble in a regulated store, they'll sell a lot more. We just got to find out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out.